Hi everybody. Uh, today I wanted to show you some work holding devices in my shop and uh, most of them that we're going to look at today are vices. Um, but we'll look at some other things too. First of all on my bench here I have two vices that probably most of you who do handwork, uh, if you work on guitars, you probably know about both of these vices. Um, this one is um, a, a swivel vise with uh, jaws that can be swiveled. You'll need a 21 millimeter wrench to adjust and, and clamp the vise jaws if, if that's what you want to do. I've had this for a long time. It was given to me by a wonderful friend, a good customer. And I tried to get friendly with it and love it, but I just couldn't fall in love with it. It seems too big. It's kind of clunky. Um, it's got this little handle on it for closing it. And it kind of, you can see it wiggles around and it's just not my style to have, you know, something with this amount of play in my shop. And instead of fixing it, I just kind of ignored it. Um, so having said that, not trashing it, but it's not what I prefer. Having said that, I do almost all the work that gets held in a vise in my shop. Most of it happens in this vise, which is, uh, well, this one doesn't have a label anymore, but this was one of the, maybe the last ones that was made in the U.S. Uh, in Ohio. This is a Versa vise. At Parker Guitars, we bought these by the, case um, and I'd like to show you a little bit about this vice because it's so useful and, and, uh, and, and interesting. It's a brilliant design actually. So um, first of all the vice can be removed from the mounting post. This is a one and a half inch diameter, um, well this is cast iron uh, like the rest of the vice. It can be laid down like that and now you can you could put a piece of material in the vise that was long and work on the end of it. Um, as you can see, it rotates, but uh, only until it's clamped, in which case it, it is firm. All right. And then you'll also see that there's a screw here. This is um, a style of screw that I added, not the original one. Sometimes if you buy a used one, these will be corroded in place. And I believe this was a, this was, this idea was patented in 1901 by the inventor. And I'm going to include a link um, to a page that, that tells a little bit about that. So this clever thingy has a pivot here. You can see the pivot. And then there's a little foot inside the bore. You can see the foot right here, um, and I don't know if you can see, but there's there's where you can see the wear on that foot, maybe the shiny spot in the middle. Great, and then um, so when you clamp the vise shut, that presses and and applies a force here to the bottom of the jaw, which is screw adjustable, and um, it works, it works great, and what it does is it lets you adjust the parallelism of the jaws, right? Which is a big problem in vices, and um, this is a, it's a great idea, an old idea, and it still works beautifully. And why don't we move over to this version of the vise, and I'll show you exactly how it works. Okay, so this is a little bit different style. This, this style was discontinued quite a while ago, but you can still find them on eBay. They, uh, for some reason, are called gunsmith's vice, but it was originally sold as a carpenter's vice, um, which is more plausible, I think. So here's a piece of paper being clamped at the top of the jaws. And here's a piece of paper that I'm sliding through the bottom of the jaw, right? So um, as we tighten this, and this is adjust, how much this happens is adjustable, again, by the screw down the bottom. As we tighten this, we get to a point where now it's clamping both pieces of paper. So it touches on top first, 
and then as you clamp it, the iron distorts and it comes into contact uh, all along this, which is in incredibly useful. It's an incredibly great tool. So I'll point out that the, the size of the jaws on the two styles of vices are just about the same. This one is arranged so that the jaw is vertical, whereas the other style that we can still buy uh, has the jaw rotated 90 degrees so that the, the jaw is longer than it is tall. But this is a cool vise as well, and same features otherwise, just a little different uh, configuration of the jaws. A couple things. Uh, I like to, uh, I, I never need the whole lever to, to tighten the vise due to the work that I do, I guess if you were really cranking uh, on something, you might need a, more leverage. But I usually put a rubber band over it like this, or I'll go back to this, this other one. On this one, I, I drilled and tapped a, a hole for a screw so I can, I can remove this. Every once in a while, when you have it all clamped, this thing is in the way for what you're trying to do. So this, this way you can get it out of the way if that's, if that's helpful. That's the VersaVice. I can't recommend it too highly. It really is an awesome tool. And again, you can get a, a knockoff uh, made in Asia um, that works quite well for really short money. So let me show you what I do um, to help me hold uh, angled parts like a guitar neck. Um, so this is a just a little piece of two by four. I put some uh, aluminum strips in here to take the wear. You can see how it's, it's kind of mushroomed out. And I glue leather to this face, a piece of substantial cowhide. And there's also a piece of cowhide glued on this face. I just use five minute epoxy. It works really well. And then here's some other, here's some other ones. Here's one I use just for my bridge bottom. This one clamps a parallel piece. It doesn't really need to, to uh, swivel to do its work. So back end is straight. Here's the first one I built a million years ago. I have a piece of something here, I guess it's mahogany, um, that I put in there and I thought that that was, thought that was a good idea. And this is uh, used just for a certain job right now. And then here's another style. Um, this actually is probably a better idea if any of you are going to make them. It makes more sense than doing it like this, just to put a rod in there somehow. And that'll give you your uh, angular compliance so that when you want to put in uh, a neck, which is tapered about, usually about one degree per side, you can get it in there and, and really, really get a, uh, you know, a good grip on it. Uh, it's nice and friendly. And the whole thing is easy to work on. Everything's kind of soft and, and friendly feeling. You can kind of, you know, sand off the corners, the sharp edges, so that you don't get nicked on it while you're working on it. And I just think this thing is killer. I mean, it'll hold, it'll hold parts, um, you know, that are delicate in a very secure way. So that's, that's great. And it also, I should show you, uh, here's one, another style. This one, instead of having a whole rod, I took a plastic rod and cut part of it off, screwed through this piece of diamond wood, which is a whole story in itself. But anyway, and that one, that one fits this vise and does the same kind of angular compliance job. So, and of course, if you needed to, you could make it so that it, it, it accommodated bigger angles than that. Anyhow, awesome, awesome tool. And then, just to fill in the tour, uh, this is the first manufacturer, Baller, from Chicago. And it says, I don't know if you can read it, it says patented here, patented in 1901 by the inventor. It's a number one, of course it is. And of course it, it, it has this, this is the patented part, I believe. Uh, the rest of the vice. Although, well, this might be a patent too. I, I didn't take the trouble to look it up. And then <clears throat> for the bases, uh, usually something like this is supplied with, um, with three feet. We can screw that down to your bench. 
and I end up I end up putting them all over the place. So I make my own uh, pins with a half inch bolt and just bolt them to the bench. These can be easily removed if you don't want the pin there, and it works just as well as the one they supply. Here's one that somebody made. Um, you can buy it on eBay. Somebody, I guess he's a beginning welder, but um, somebody made this, and it works well enough. And so this will adapt the vise for another angle of rotation. So if you had the vise here, I think you can see that it would end up um, rotating in this direction as well. And you know when you clamp it, it'll it'll hold on to that. So this adds another axis um, to the vise. And then this is another way to do that, uh, where this one. Again, I think this is an eBay gizmo. This one goes here, and then the vice goes in here. Whoop! <laughs> okay. Well, need a little troubleshooting on this one. Maybe, maybe it's not exactly the same size. Anyway, there it is, close enough for this demonstration. You can see from the condition of this, it's not something that I use very often. I rarely uh, think about these, these two guys, but I have them in case I need them. Anyway, so that's the VersaVice story. I think that's about all I can tell you about that. While we're here on my bench, I would show you a couple other things. One is uh, um, bench hook, you know, really common thing. This would be for, for sawing or for chiseling something or, or shooting something with a little plane. You know, these are kind of nice. You can, you can put it in a vise if you want. You can, you can put it in a vise like this and then, and then it's a nice backstop to, to help you work on small parts. Okay, and then here's a vise that I made um, that holds the guitar on edge. Uh, for playing around with the sides of the guitar. And this is just a, um, you know, chunk of material with one movable side and one stationary side, some padding, and just hold it together with, with some Irwin clamps and pretty good fixture, you know? So that's how that works. Okay, nice and rigid. While we're talking about vices, here's a, here's a cutie. This is a Universal Vice and Tool Company. Uh, from This one's from Michigan. And uh, this vice has a very unusual uh, set of abilities. So um, this normally would be used on a milling machine. And you can see that there's a, a graduated scale uh, for rotation, so you can set the vise for any angle. The vise jaws can angle relative to the surface of the table and the, and the direction of travel of the milling machine. But you also see these two dovetail things here, which I'm not going to uh, <laughs> I'm not going to demonstrate it. But but anyway, if you loosen these four screws on the top part, it'll let this part of the vise rotate up um, or, or down a little bit. And then likewise, if you loosen these four bolts, it'll let the vise swing side to side and, and rotate in this direction. So it's a true universal vise, just like it says on it, and there's nothing you can't do to position the work for um, whatever your intended purpose of or cut is. Anyway, cool tool. Um, <laughs> also from the machine shop, we have these guys, which are called um, machinist vices or precision vices. And the way these work, uh, a couple different ways, but this has a, a dowel pin, and then there's a little hole in, the, in, in what's the nut, right? So you can, you get your gross adjustment by figuring out 
um, what hole, <laughs> figuring out what hole you want to use, and then you drop the pin in there um, and um, uh, you can you can then drive it with the with an Allen wrench and that'll close the vise like that. And it's a little bit bigger one. These are unbelievably well made and really cheap, surprisingly cheap. Now this one is a little bit different, a little bit more sophisticated, modern style. This one has the pin as captive, so you don't have to pull it out and struggle with it like I just did. And this one you just put, you know, you just move it to where you need it and then that's that. There's no loose part, which is kind of cool. So those are nice. And so often you grab something in this and then you grab this in another vise, say like that, um, and that that can you know that can give you some, another axis, some other options about uh, work holding. All right, so now we've got this guy, which is normally used on a drill press. So you've got your your coarse adjustment just slides, and then the fine adjustment is a cam that throws the throws the jaws closed, um, and I don't know, uh, it's not the most powerful thing, but here, let's have a look. We've got this strain gauge here. Um, so there's something like zero pounds, and then we'll put this guy in there. Whoops. Then we'll We'll put the gauge in there and close it. And yeah, that's quite a lot of force, 675 pounds. That ought to hold it to drill a hole. <laughs> so that's the, that's pretty cool, pretty cool vise actually. Very useful. These aren't vices, but it's work holding. These are made by the Wilton Company. These are two styles of what they call a power arm. And let's see, what model is this one? Is a, let's see. Oh, this is a 3011. Okay, and this one has a, a mechanical cam in it. So you, you position whatever it is you have attached to this and then when you throw the mechanical cam, it pushes up on this ball and, and uh, grabs it so that it'll hold whatever position you want. And here's a, here's a different style. This one's hydraulic. So there's a little piston here, a little piston here. Um, so when you tighten this, it pushes on the fluid and does the same action of pushing the ball up into this device. And these work great. Um, so you can loosen it and then you can position the part anywhere you want. Um, of course, you'd normally clamp this down, but you could, you could work on any part of it, really. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful way to, to do this. You can get access to it in, in uh, whatever way is convenient and saves a lot of stooping and crouching. <laughs> really, really great tool. So this, is, this one is a three, 303. So it's a 301 and a 303. You can find these on eBay. They're very expensive, new, but um, if you keep looking, you'll find, find the one you need. So that's, that's the power arm. And uh, let's look at some other vices. While we're at it, I dragged them all out to show you. So, this is a specialty vise where it says Henry Diston and Sons. Of course, Diston was a company that made a lot of great uh, tools, mostly saws. And this is a, a, a vise to sharpen and set a handsaw. So just a little cam action. It just, it just clamps on a small range of material after all the Saws are almost always the same thickness, so you just need a little cam. And then again, um, it has a, 
a ball just like these other devices we were just looking at so that you can you can position it in whatever way seems most useful. Cool item. And I can't really read what that says. Something. But anyway, here's a cool little vice you can clamp to your kitchen table. Nice. Look at a little tiny anvil. <laughs> kind of silly, but uh, I don't know why I'm showing you this. All right, so then, um, and in the spirit of I don't know why I'm showing you this, look at this behemoth. Now, this is a killer piece of gear. I don't know if you can read this, but it says Prentice Vice Company, New York, number 94, Bulldog. So well, you know it's got to be good. Look at this thing, a classy piece of work. Many of these bench vices are, have a swivel base like this one does, where you need to uh, get access um, either underneath or on this one, they, they have the rotation clamp is on top uh, with a big nut on it. And this is, a, this is an oldie, but a really cool vice. Um, and it's a spare, actually. It's not, I have yet to mount it in my shop. I couldn't resist it. Um, but here's the one that's a lot like it. Uh, this vice was given to me incomplete a long time ago, and I ended up um, spending some, <laughs> oh, like who knows how many hours on the milling machine and fussing around with it, making parts for it to get it set up, but I've never regretted it. It's awesome, and it's capable of a huge clamping force. I mean, I know it looks, looks like it's a little sloppy, but I promise you that doesn't matter at all. And now that I've retrieved our handy dandy force gauge, we'll try and get a sense of how much pressure this thing can, now you remember the other Drill press vise, we got 675, so there's um, a ton and a half. <laughs> Should I keep going? So there's two tons, 4,060 something pounds. I mean, I could go more probably, but you get the idea. Occasionally, a big vise like this, securely mounted, is really a pal when you need to clamp something um, that requires more force than you would normally be able to get with um, the, you know, the clamps that we, that we use in guitar making. This is uh, um, <laughs> obviously a very powerful tool. And then maybe we should mention this as well. This is a, an arbor press. And this you can think of as a kind of a momentary vice uh, maybe, um, and, and with this tool we can, we can push on things. I know a lot of people actually install frets with these. It's not something I do, but it's a perfectly fine method. Um, and you need a little something that's the, the right shape to help coax the fret in. But anyway, that's, that's an Arbor Press, number two greenered. This is a number three greenered, and the number means the number of tons it's supposed to be able to apply. Uh, and I'll resist the idea of showing you on the gauge that it really does three tons, but let's, let's, let's believe it does. Um, this is a cool thing. They're made in um, Nashua, New Hampshire, Greenard Arbor Press. Standard, uh, made jillions of them. Awesome tool, really useful tool. Uh, okay, over here. Oh, we have to go back to this vice just for a minute because I neglected to point out that this vice, it says right here, C. Parker. So I'm, I think it was designed by Charlie Parker. Uh, and Meriden, Connecticut is where my parents lived when I was in my mom's womb. So that's kind of cool. That's, a, that's my vice for sure. Over here, we have Cheney Anvil and Vice Company. Where have I heard that name before? Uh, let's see, this is, what does it say, Eaton? No, patent number, something or other. 
nice vice. This was my grandfather's vice, and um, not too different from um, the vice that we were looking at a minute ago, except it does have this fairly useful and stepped anvil and a, a nice surface here. Um, and it also has a kind of a cool um, feature, or this is a tapered pin in the 19th century. Everything was put together with tapered pins and it allows this vice to, to swivel, this vice to to swivel, which is, which is occasionally very useful. Anyway, there's that. And then, um, Last but certainly not least, we're going to look at this vise. This is a, a special milling vise that was designed by a friend of mine, a couple, couple brothers, um, the Baloo brothers. And it's, um, it's no longer available, unfortunately. Uh, it's two, essentially two uh, five-inch vise jaws with, uh, of course, adding up to a 10-inch back jaw. And um, it's very versatile and um, great vice to have on your milling machine. So much more useful, in fact, than having two identical vices side by side. Um, in this vice, you can, you can hold the work in one place and a stop in the other side, or you can hold odd things. There's a lot of ways uh, it turns out to be super useful uh, on the milling machine. I think that's about it for vices, and I need to be, I think I need to be congratulated on not making the slightest pun or uh, attempting any humor about the word vice. Thanks. <laughs>